Hello, everyone. This is the lecture for section 6.2, Properties of Power Series. So and in this section, um, we're going to look at some of the algebra and some of the calculus that we can do with power series. I know this sounds a little weird. We're in calculus. How can we do calculus? It, it happens. It happens. Okay. Um, looking at how we can manipulate a power series using the calculus that we know up to now and some of the algebra. Some of the algebra might make sense. Some of the calculus might also make sense. There's just a couple things that uh, need to be sort of outright explained. We'll get there when we get there. Um, so uh, in section 6.1, we know how to find at least rudimentary, right? How to find a power series for a function uh, f of x, right? Okay, so we know how to find them at least for now. Okay, and it's for particular um, functions, right? Um, and then we learned that, uh, you know, one of the big questions that we have for a power series or a series in general, right, is uh, whether or not these series converge or diverge, right? And in the last section, um, uh, we, we sort of figured out that uh, the power series that we can generate from a function, right? They might just converge over a specific interval, right? Um, so we're going to continue on that, right? We're going to just, uh, uh, for, for this section, we're going to assume, right, that we have convergent power series, that they have uh, specific radiuses of convergence, right? So what can we do to combine power series together, right? And what happens? What, what, uh, what nice stuff can we do? right, with it, okay? Um, this is important, really important. Once we get to uh, Taylor and Maclaurin series, that's gonna be the next section, section 6.3, okay? Uh, but before we do any of that, we have to do this prerequisite stuff to just build up uh, a little bit of theory, okay? So the first thing I wanna get into is combining power series, okay? Uh, and there's some stuff in here that we already uh, have been using, okay? So let me go ahead and start explaining this uh, theory theorem out, right? Uh, suppose that you had two power series, right? And you know that each one of those converge to F and G, right? The one with the CNs converge to F and the, the ones with the DNs converge to G, right? and they converge on a common interval i, okay? Okay, then the first thing we can conclude, right, is that the power series of their sum or difference, it doesn't matter which one it is, right? Uh, the sum or difference will converge to f plus g on i, okay? Uh, this is basically just saying that if we, you know, add up the power series for both of them, they just end up being the um, the sum or the difference, whichever one we were playing with, right? Um, if we add or uh, subtract two power series, they're just gonna converge to the addition or the subtraction of the two functions that they came from. That's it, okay? Two states that suppose, and, and I'm, I, I wanna make this, uh, I'm gonna do it in another color here. You have a b times x to the m, some random sort of multiplication of b times x to the m uh, term, right? Uh, notice that this b x to the m term does not have an n attached to it, right? So we can easily factor that thing out, right? In which case, you get left with the power series of f of x, right? Which means that this thing should converge to this right here bx to the m times f of x on my interval i, okay? The third option, right? <clears throat> the third option says that suppose you had uh, a b value, right? Such that, and I wanna stress this, that you, you see this thing that's, it's the bx to the m is inside x to the n, right? Okay, and if and I'm going to write it down below it, right? So the idea is n equals zero to infinity c n x to the n. We know this is f of x, right? But this thing has a b x to the m in it, right? So it's got to converge to f of that thing right there, right? That's simple. It's got to converge to that thing, okay? Now, 
Oh man. Um, the, uh, the good thing about all three of these is that I've already made you do them. I made you do them in 6.1, okay? And to show you guys what I'm talking about, right? I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down. There, these are quick checks that you can use, uh, that you can do using the stuff from uh, section um, 6.1, okay? So uh, for this first one, right? Uh, you can do an X times, right? One over three minus X, and then you can manipulate this thing this one over three minus X, so you can get a power series for that thing, right? That is part two, right? That you can just factor out an X out, right? And then use uh, part two, right? To find the uh, power series there, right? And number two, you guys can see that this one is going to be, I can factor out a two, right? It's gonna be one over one plus x squared, and you get to multiply that thing in the parentheses for the evens, right? You get to multiply that one divided by one plus x squared to get your power series for that, right? And that is option three, right? That you're gonna have to ma manipulate this somehow so you can get the thing that's gonna be uh, of concern, right? When you convert into the power series, because you're gonna have a something x squared that's gonna be in your power series. Okay, so like I said, I've already been making you do this already. So it's not a big, big, big deal. Okay, uh, let's keep moving on. Okay, uh, the next thing I wanna do, this one I'm not gonna be too concerned with, uh, but it is uh, fairly important. It's, it's more tedious than anything, okay? Uh, it's the multiplication of power series. Okay, uh, so let me go ahead and run through the theory or the theorem for it. Suppose you had two power series, right? One that has C of n's and one that has D of n's, right? Uh, and they converge to an F and to a G respectively, right? Uh, on a common interval I, okay? Okay, when you multiply the two, right? <clears throat> when you multiply the two, uh, it's a bunch of repeated foiling. If you guys re remember foiling the first outer inner last, right? Um, so each one of these is going to be like a, you know, a C of C of zero, uh, C1 X to the one, C2 X to the two, C3 X to the three, right? Um, and then the other one's going to be, you know, D0 plus D1 uh, X to the one plus D2 X to the two plus D3 X to the three, so on and so on. And then you're going to have to multiply them, right? Uh, when you do the multiplication, that's just like repeated foiling, right? And then you have to, you know, um, group all the terms together. You're going to grab all, everything that just has x's, everything that just has x squareds, everything that has x cubes, everything that has x to the fourths, right? And you're going to combine them, and then you're going to want to maybe hopefully put down, um, uh, you're just going to have a coefficient for that multiplication, right? That coefficient is this thing right here, this e to the n. So if you take a look at how this works out, right? It's C zero D to the N. So that's the first, um, the coefficient of the first times the last coefficient of the second, right? And then it follows the second coefficient of the first times. <laughs> it's basically uh, doing the, uh, it's doing the, um, uh, the foiling, the first outer inner last, right? You're distributing everything and then collecting terms, right? Okay, when you do this multiplication right here, right? You get this power series, okay? You get this power series right here, right? Where each one of the coefficients is now this thing. And to simplify that, it's this right here. I know it's going to look weird that you now you're going to have a summation inside a summation, but it's completely it, it, it can happen. You get you guys are getting there. You guys are getting there. Okay. Uh, and more importantly, this power series that you found, right? That power series that you found is going to converge right to f of x times g of x. 
Okay. Uh, there's something in there from the book. It's that that multiplication of two series. It's, it, it's what's called the Cauchy product. Um, you don't really need to know that for now. It's nice. It's a nice word that you get to use to throw around the kitchen table. That's it. Um, uh, that thing, that Cauchy product becomes real big if you ever want to study math for the rest of your life. Okay. So this, this is more, uh, I'm, I'm summarizing a very tedious operation here. That's it. But it's exactly what you expect. If you grab two power series that converge uh, to F and G, right? Uh, and you multiply them, right? That multiplication is going to be a power series in and of itself. And it's going to the, be the power series uh, of the, um, it's going to be the power series of the multiplication of uh, F and G. That's it. Okay. Um, the nastiness, the e to the end that you see there is just the coefficients of the, the power series itself. Okay. If you want to work it out for yourself to see it, um, go ahead. It's like I said, really tedious, not necessary. Uh, it's more of a uh, an exercise than just making sure your algebra is okay, okay? Uh, besides that, you can just go ahead and believe me for that one. The big one that I want to get to is differentiating and integrating power series, okay? This is the more important one, okay? Because this is the thing um, uh, that you use, that we're gonna be using uh, in our next section, in section 6.3, okay? <clears throat> so if you have a power series, right? Um, then let's, let's go ahead and summarize. Let's, let's go ahead and start, uh, uh, putting some stuff in here, right? Suppose that you have a power series, that thing, right? That converges on an interval, some interval, random interval, right? And let F be the function defined by that series, right? So we know that this is the power series for it right here. Okay. Uh, then F is going to be differentiable. So you can take the derivative of this thing, right? Of this f of x, which means you could take the derivative of the power series, right? And what we do is we call that term by term differentiation, okay? And the idea is not much different than what we learned in Calc 1. The derivative for this, right, is gonna be this. And if you take a look, right, the C of n's are supposed to be constants, so we don't really entirely care about those, right? And then the derivative of something that looks like this, right? Uh, X minus A to the N, right? If we wanna take the derivative of that, that's gonna be a chain rule, right? So the N drops uh, to the front, it's gonna be minus one. So it's gonna be N X minus A to the N minus one, right? And then times the derivative of the inside, which is just one, so we're good, right? So then this right here will be the derivative of said power series, okay? And the way that we can sort of see that the, that's the formula there, right, is uh, go ahead, take the derivative of each one of these, right? So the derivative of a constant is zero, so the C zero term goes away, right? The derivative of, um, did I mess up? I did, I did mess up. Uh, look at me go. That's not supposed to be there. Aha, so it's supposed to be C1 plus two C2 X minus A, right? Plus three C3 X minus A squared. You guys see that? So if you take the derivative of this, right? You should get C1. If you take the derivative of this, it should be this thing. Derivative of this should be this thing so on and so forth, right? Cool. Okay, let's move on to the next one, integration. Okay, so integration means uh, that we can do, just like we can do term by term differentiation, we can do term by term integration, right? So uh, hopefully this one looks correct, I think so. Um, if we want to integrate, right? Let me go back up here. Let me erase this so I can do some, there we go. If we integrate C zero, that is a constant. So that gets just an X minus A, right? If we integrate this, right? The X minus A, if we wanna integrate that, right? It's gonna be squared over two. There's that thing, right? If we wanna do 
this one, right? That's going to be cubed over three, right? And in this case, we have to add the C because this is a indefinite integral. You guys remember that? Okay. Okay. But now look at the formula, the summation formula, this bit right here. Notice that the constant still remains the same, but the rule for the integration, right, is the one that we learned at the very begin that at the very beginning of this class or at the very end of Calc one, right? It's just uh, the exponent plus one divided by the plus one. That's it. That is it. Okay. All right. So now, why the heck do we have these? Okay. So let me do. Let me at least do one. Right, I'm gonna integrate and differentiate this power series, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and do it, uh, since I'm the instructor, I need to sort of explain all of this, right? I'm gonna write out the terms, a couple terms for this power series, right? So uh, the couple terms that I'm gonna write out, I'm gonna do, what is it? One, two, three, four, maybe six or seven terms, right? So if you write these out, it's gonna be two uh, x, squared minus 2x to the fifth plus 2x to the eighth, right? Minus 2x to the 11th plus 2x to the 14th uh, minus 2x to the 17th plus 2x to the 20th, right? And then the next one should be minus dot, 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 dot. It just keeps going, right? Okay, so there's a reason why I did this. I'm gonna actually do the term by term integration and term by term differentiation for each one of these. And you guys will see what's going on, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the derivative. So I'm gonna do derivative here, All right? So the derivative of two x squared, right? Hopefully you guys can see this is gonna be two times two x. The next one is going to be minus, the minus still stays, right? Uh, the derivative here is going to be 2 times 5x to the fourth plus 2 times the derivative of x to the eighth, so it's going to be 8x to the seventh minus, right? The 2 stays is going to be uh, 11x to the tenth. Yeah. Uh, plus the next one, right? Uh, 2 times 14 x to the 13, right? Uh, minus 2, 17, x to the 16th, uh, plus the next one, so it's gonna be 2, 20, x to the 19, minus dot, 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 okay? Okay, so, and I didn't need to do that, there we go, dot, 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 there we go. So now the idea is I want to sort of create, put this back into a summation term, right? Make it look like that thing again, right? Put a summation out front. If you take a look, right? This is gonna be equal to, right? The sum n equals zero to infinity. The two is in front for everything. So we're good there. There's still a switching sign, so I'm going to have to include the minus one to the n, right? And now the derivative, right? If you take a look how the derivative works for all of these, it's just that exponent that dropped down and then minus one. So it's going to be 3n plus 2x to the 3n plus 1. So I had to do a minus one to the 3n plus 2, so that's why we have the minus one. So this is the differentiation. This is the derivative, okay? Integral, right? Uh, just how I did term by term differentiation, I took the derivative of each one of my x terms, right? I can do a uh, the integral of each one of my x terms and get my integral for that. So the integral of the very first thing is uh, two, because there's still a two, right? x cubed over three minus two x to the sixth over six, right? Plus two, the derivative of x to the eighth is x to the ninth over 
nine. And let me put this one in parentheses too. There we go. Uh, next one, minus two. Uh, the derivative of x to the 11th is x to the, or sorry, the integral of x to the 11th is x to the 12th over 12, 12, 12. There we go. Uh, plus two. The, uh, the integral of x to the 14th is x to the 15th over 15. You guys hopefully see what's going on. Minus 2 times x to the 18th over 18, right? Plus 2 x to the 21 over 21, right? Minus da 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 da. Okay. Now, let's put it into a summation form, right? You guys see, hopefully, whoa, n equals zero to infinity of two minus one. So there's still to the n, there's still a two in front of everything. The signs are still swapping. So I still need a negative one to the n, right? But then that x term, right? The way that we do that, uh, the way that we do that integral, right, is going to be the x to the three n plus three because it's going to be three n plus two plus one. So that's where we get a uh, the plus three divided by three n plus three. And I'm going to put that in parentheses just to sort of separate it away. And we are done. This is the term by term integration or the power series now of the integral of that function of that um of that power series that we started with okay now uh i would want to say this i'm highlighting this stuff in the pink that's the term by term integration right this is the term by term integration for all of this uh in your lecture questions and in your exams if it asks for the term by term integration, then I want to see it. If it does not, you can assume you can go ahead and do this. You can you can assume the pink stuff and just give me the derivative or the integral, that final formula um, as you see fit. Got it? Okay. I'm spelling it out because I'm the instructor. I'm supposed to be doing that, right? Uh, but hopefully you guys see that the, the, the operation, now that we know how to take derivatives and integrals, the operations themselves, there's, Simple enough, got it? Okay, so what comes up next now is uh, quick checks. So uh, I've given you guys these power series before, okay? I want you to integrate and differentiate the following power series and write out the first five couple terms. Just this one time, I'm gonna make you write out the first five terms, right? Uh, you won't ever get me to write, you will never have me have you write out more than five terms ever again. I'm just making you do them just this one time, okay? Uh, after that, I'm not gonna bother, okay? So go ahead and take the derivative of these um, uh, power series and integrate these uh, power series. Give me the first five terms, okay? And I really want you to pause the video here um, and try it out, okay? And here's a re there's a reason why in a second. So pause the video and try them out. Okay, so now the reason why I got you guys to uh, pause the video, right? Uh, is this, now I wanna go ahead and uh, there's a fair amount of observations that I need to make here, okay? Uh, I made you guys mess with power series just now, that one and this one, right? And from the previous section, we know that they are equivalent to these two functions, right? And hopefully if you guys remember, uh, if you guys uh, actually went, out, went, went ahead and did this, you plug these both in, right? You plugged in the one over one plus X and one over one minus X into Desmos. And then you plugged in their associated power series into Desmos and let K go to 50 or hundred, whatever it was, right? Um, <clears throat> and you, you saw that they converged right, over negative one to one, or they converged over their uh, interval of convergence, right? Uh, I did, as an example, last section, I did that this equation right here, right, 
this equation right here, right, is equivalent to this power series, right? So now, there's something I want to point out here that, uh, and that's the next couple of lines here, that the integral of this, right, if you do the outright integral, if you do the outright integral, so you use u substitution, you let u equal one over x uh, to the third, right? Uh, you integrate one over u, that got you this, two thirds ln of one plus x to the third, right? And in the example that I did above, right, that is exactly the power series I got, right? With the exception of this plus c, right? Okay. Uh, so what, what, what I want you guys to see here is this, that uh, by integrating term by term, right, a power series that we found from before, we have now found the power series for the function's integral this thing right here. We have found the power series for another function using integration and differentiation, okay? Which is pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't look cool for now for you guys, right? Uh, but it's pretty, uh, it's, it's a powerful thing that we just found uh, mostly in uh, physics and in computer science. and. Uh, your last lecture questions for this section um, uh, provides you a pretty good example of why this was so big, that why this was a, such a fairly big discovery uh, in terms of how this can be applied to science, okay? Um, so inadvertently to you all, right? Uh, I made you guys find two pretty important power series that are labeled everywhere. So, the power series for uh, ln of one plus x is this right here. Okay. Um, and the power series for this, the negative one minus x squared, right, is this right here. And the way that we did that was the first one, right? We did it by differentiation, or sorry, the first one, right? This one was done by integration, and this one was done by differentiation of two known power series that we already knew, right? Okay, so we're getting closer to, to Taylor series, which is really the big jump um, in terms of importance to math and importance to just outside of math, all the mathematical sciences. So your physics, your chemistry, your engineering, uh, your computer science, okay? Okay. Last bit of theory I need to run through with everybody is the uniqueness of a power series, okay? And this one basically says uh, that suppose, right, you have one particular function, f of x. Suppose that you have one particular function, f of x, right? And somehow, by some magic, right, you produce two power series, right, that, you know, the math worked out right, you did everything right, and they're supposed to match up to this f of x, right? Uh, the uniqueness of the power series, uh, this theorem states that essentially, right, you found two of the same power series. So both the power series are exactly equivalent, okay? And a lot of the uniqueness theorems uh, in math work out this way, that it basically says, suppose that for one thing, you found two different ways of writing it, then the two different ways of writing it are exactly the same thing. That's exactly what it says, okay? This is pretty powerful because that says that for every one function that you can think of, right, there's gotta be only one power series associated to it, okay? So if you find two different representations of, of a power series to a particular function, right? Those two different representations are essentially equal. They are supposed to be the same, okay? They are supposed to be exactly the same, okay? So we've got most of what we need now. Uh, I don't know why that thing is written there. There we go. Uh, we've got most of what we need now uh, for the discussion of Taylor series, which is gonna come up in our next section, okay? Um, so the results in this section, right, combining, multiplying, differentiating, and uh, 
uh, integrating power series, right, gives us what we need to manipulate a power series with all the calculus and the algebra that we know of right now, right? And then finally, this last little bit, right, says that uh, suppose that you had a function, right, uh, then there must exist only one, only one power series associated to it. Okay, uh, this is all that we need now for Taylor series. So uh, the next the next section is going to be pretty heavy. It's going to be at least for me, it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Okay, uh, next section or uh, what comes up next is uh, lecture questions. Uh, <clears throat> try these out. Um, they're using the stuff that we used in the section from above, right? If you got any questions on them, uh, come to my all day hours, um, come to my office hours, or just drop me an email, okay? And uh, besides that, I think I am done here. Happy studying. <laughs>